Yeah, I was just thinking as you were talking about like the, the military fortune, it seems like that the, the, the entire story is really kind of a uh, reminiscence to between like how to enslave people um, operate in the valley, whether they seek freedom or not, do they run away or not, really relates to like the, the extremely complicated military stories that you have in the valley as well, that it's, it's these two are very closely intertwined with each other. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the one of the statistics I give in the book is about, you know, the, the incessant military activity and you know, years ago, the National Park Service did a did a study, and they they did an accounting of how many different battles and skirmishes and actions, and it was 326 is the number they came up with, and 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 the large majority of of those actions are occurring in the northern part of the Shenandoah Valley, and and one of the other points that I make in the book is that there is a there is a distinct difference, um, particularly early on in the war for the experiences of enslaved and free black people in the Northern Shenandoah Valley as compared to the Southern part of the Valley. Mm -hmm. So the areas around Augusta County and Rockbridge County. And I know there's, there's probably viewers who have read um, Ed Ayers's uh, two wonderful books mm -hmm. um, in the presence of mine enemies and thin light of freedom. And, you know, he, he does, you know, excellent. He offers these excellent descriptions and discussions of, you know, life for African-Americans in Augusta County but as I point out in the book, if you're in Winchester, you might as well be a world away. Um, it's just a very, very different experience until um, you have federal troops finally get into the southern part of the valley um, in the late spring of 1864.